Thousands of Southland residents may be feeling a little on edge or even traumatized right now. Large numbers of people have been plunged directly into the fight for their lives and their homes without even a day to process the mass shooting last Thursday. Question, how do you cope with the day-to-day -day unpredictability? Dr. Carol Lieberman, a forensic psychiatrist, can empathize. You were also evacuated during the Malibu Woolsey fire. Let me first ask you, how are you doing? How's your home? Well, so far, as of last night, the latest report I've gotten is that it's okay. But that's kind of the point. I don't think anyone can rest. I'm waiting to exhale yeah. because with these embers and the winds and so on, you can't be sure that everything is going to stay okay. And it's been a total roller coaster because I'm watching television, you know, trying to get a glimpse, and then you don't want to get a glimpse because it's like you're, you're filled with dread that they're going to show your house yeah. in flames. Um, and then social media, and there's a lot of misinformation on social media. You know, there are videos, there are comments. You can really drive yourself crazy just trying to follow all of that on social media uh, because people don't really know. And so it's been hard. It's been, I had my, you know, my house, I have a horse in Topanga, a horse in, a horse in um, uh, Saddle Rock. And there's still all right. these questions about Saddle Rock. There's all this stuff about the giraffe, but what about the horses that yeah. are there? Yeah, that's so right. it's very, it's really disconcerting. Okay, so Dr. Lieberman, take that hat off for a moment. Put your doctor hat back yes. on for us. Uh, I feel horrible for the people of Thousand Oaks who suffered this horrible shooting massacre. And before we even begin to talk about, tell their stories, begin the grieving process, that story is almost pushed yes. because of fires burning yes. now uh, and have, are still burning. What do you say to those people? I know some of them had to evacuate, even yeah. some of the families of those uh, shooting victims. Yes, it just, you know, this is a, a, an example of when you just ask why, like, why do bad things happen to good people? You know, two mm. bad things in a row. Uh, you kind of feel that you were, one was enough. You know, obviously, um, people who are having these kinds of traumatic reactions, um, you know, it's, you're grieving. You're grieving, obviously, if you had a, a loved one who died in the shooting, but you're grieving if, with the fire, if you've lost your house. Um, grief and sadness, you know, it can turn into something more serious, so you might need to get um, help, professional help. But also, you need to surround yourself in the meantime with friends, um, you need to try to not be glued to the television uh, and, and just try to make plans for the future one way or the other. In other words, if let's say you, your house is okay right now, um, but it might, something might happen, you need to sort of start making plans just in case that something bad would happen. Um, there's, a, there's anxiety, of course, PTSD. A lot of people are talking about how this is reminding them of 9-11. Yeah. Uh, because of the ashes, because of the suddenness, because of how huge the devastation was and so on. So there are going to be people triggered. Uh, their PTSD is going to be triggered if they were anywhere involved in 9-11. Then, of course, the firefighters. You know, we owe such a debt of gratitude to the firefighters. They're working so they, hard. Oh, yeah. They're working so hard. They're working ten times as hard as they should have to work. And some of them have been affected as well with some and, law yes. enforcement fire with their homes affected and yes. evacuated. Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things I know that's being talked about is that how the reason why the firefighters are having to work so hard is because there really weren't enough of them and enough resources from the beginning. This is something that's been happening since last year with the uh, North California fires where they don't call in people from other states, firefighters and resources from other states until too late, like it was too little too late. And firefighters take it very personally. It's not only the trauma, you know, the, uh, the traumatic experience of risking your life, but they're used to that. They wanted to do that. But when they can't save houses, when so many houses have been lost, that really affects them tremendously. And I know there have been places, you know, in Malibu, there have been other places where you know, houses were burning up and there were no fire yeah. trucks to be seen. Um, Dr. So, Lieberman, quickly uh, before we let you go, I know a lot of people, these images are so powerful, they're so compelling. And uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and other via, uh, you know, avenues of social media, do you tell people if you can't handle it, stay off social media for a little while? or? What do well, you tell people? It's so people? hard because everybody, hard. everybody wants to know how's their house, you know, right. what's happening. 
Um, but as I was saying, there's so much misinformation, you know, inadvertently, people aren't purposely doing that, but um, that it can kind of make you more upset than, than you have to be. Um, you can try to find people who did stay in the area. Yes, of course, nobody was supposed to, but uh, to get information from them, you can try to call a fire station, um, but, you know, they're only there when they're not out fighting fires, so that isn't, you're not going to necessarily get them right away. Um, but, you know, certainly also with kids, the thing is, if you have kids, uh, you should try not to let them watch the television, you know, right. especially young kids. And if you have to evacuate, then you need to tell the kid, you can't promise them that your house is going to be okay, um, but you can tell them that, you know, if you try to use it as a camping trip. We're going on an adventure. Go, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, there, there's so much to talk about <laughs> with our kids and amongst ourselves. Yeah. And a lot of us are talking this week. So we wish you well with your home. Thank you. And your home has been evacuated. Yeah, you can hear something going on here, right? But it's hard to breathe. That's right. Anyway, but our, our home's still there, too. Thank you for the calls and the email. My heart breaks for the people who've lost yes. their homes. And when we can help the people of Thousand Oaks and start talking about the deep process. Real quick, I know we're almost out of time. What is it? I just want to say what? that the people whose houses, by the end of this, the people whose houses are still standing yeah. really need to help the people who lost their houses, not only because that's, you know, the humane thing to do, but it will make them feel better and have less survivor guilt. Right. Okay. Thank you so much for your perspective. Thank you for and coming. fingers crossed for your home. Thank you.